just over the horizon from the Dominion of Canada, the unseen battle of the Atlantic is being fought. Just so, all winter long, the ships have come and gone, quietly and steadily into the Canadian harbors, quietly and steadily out again. Yet they come over the horizon from danger, and when their smokestacks drop out of sight on the long voyage home, they know not where or when the peril will strike. The coast is guarded, heavily guarded. Coast guards challenge every incoming ship. Stop! Who are you? I am the Manchester Progress, registered at Manchester, outward bound from Liverpool. 5,600 tons and A1 at Lloyd's. Boarding officers examine and make sure. You may proceed, Manchester Progress. Ahead lie the booms, sea gates of defended ports. Night and day they open and shut for the Manchester Progress and all her brave kind. Welcome in, Manchester Progress. The dockmaster will see to your needs, and Pier 21 is ready for you. Welcome all other merchantmen. Feel against your plates the relief of quiet and friendly waters. Down past the keys, half speed to slow, slow to dead slow. Make fast in your appointed place. Canada is glad to see you back. You are a Canadian, an Englishman or a Scotsman, a Pole, a Greek, a Norwegian, a Dutchman or a Dane. You are the hard-bitten, grimy and defiant symbols of unvanquished nations that fight on. From the same battle of the Atlantic come other ships, the ships of the Navy. On the voyage, they have been the guardians and the flock masters of the tramps, the tankers, and the freighters. Their lookouts have seen everything. Night and day, their gun crews have stood by. The merchant navy does not serve us, they say. In this war, it is we who serve, and humbly serve, the merchant navy. Off there, an armed merchant cruiser, yesterday in black and scarlet, today in navy gray. A battle wagon, colossus of firing power, noses to her anchorage. Destroyers throttle down the fast turbines. Canada's own corvettes smart little crossbreeds of whaler and torpedo boat bed down in snug litters alongside. Home of the sailors, home from the sea. They come and go in the great harbors of the Atlantic. The merchant seamen come ashore, and after them, the Navy men, from a battleship, from a cruiser, from an aircraft carrier. At one time or another, Canada sees them all. Behind the port, the freight cars are piling in, the product of Canada's civilian labor mobilized for the supply of Britain. 10,000 carloads with all the problems of sorting and switching and hauling in time to the loading piers. The tempo of the port quickens. Duty boats chug from ship to ship. Bunting breaks out on the halyards as the signalmen declare washing day, and washing day spreads like a rash across the harbor. Oil pipes are connected. Let her go! Refueling begins. Ship stores go aboard. Turning around, they call it. 
and turning around means renewing all the supplies of slops and bittles, fresh tank and hard pack, barrels of oil and barrels of rum which men and ships need at sea. Flour for the ship's bakers and the daily bread of a thousand men, milk from Canadian farms for tea in the cold night watches. Ships disabled in action go into dry dock for repairs. Riveters and welders and dockyard natives take over. New decks and plates are fitted. Bottoms are straight. Propeller shafts overhauled. Behind Canada's harbors lies the other half of a maritime power. The shipbuilding and construction units. Converting the old, building the new. Out goes the Norwegian name of a peacetime painter, and one painter naturally thinks of another. The pleasure decks of fast passenger ships cut away, new ventilator ships, funnels shortened and repainted, shapes changed to low rakish cruisers. Battle of the Atlantic, but also more men. Tough men from all over. Men who know the sea already and are coming up for more. Men who will be new to it. Men who have never seen the sea. Behind Canada's harbors, they're in training. The order action. The whole of the gun crew moving at the right will clear away all obstructions in the way of working the gun. Detail, action, send that. Please, at the order action, the whole of the gun crew. I was sick to remove the The Navy slogan is writ large for all to see. See first, hit first, hit hard and keep on hitting. Here, a school of mathematics for the torpedo men, the scientists of the Navy. Young men of this mechanical generation are swift to learn. In this direction, to the right of the line of sight, that will give us another part of our training. Then we will say... Young men in mine schools from coast and ferry ponder cycles of action. Machines simulate the rolling of the deep and a life on the ocean wave. Fifteen-degree roll. 30 degree roll, so that the range finding eyes and the control tops will hold their target into the gun. The strangest school is where the lookouts learn to see like cats in the dark and recognize the silhouette of every warship afloat, be it friend or foe. Out on the harbor, loading is in full swing. Down to the bottom, after the metals, the crates of trucks and tools and parts. And into every nook and cranny, the bacon and the flour bags for the bombed out mills of the tent. When the hatches are battened down, it is to make space for deck cargoes of bombers, which signal the grim purpose of the voyage ahead. Outside on the roads and the channels, signal for out sweeps. Over the side of the mine sweepers go the floats. Belts on, lookouts posted, signals hoisted for sweeps out to port. Float working astern, keeping the right depth on the trawling wire. Working in formation, the minesweepers guarantee the fairways against the ten mines. Now the captains are in conference, fifty and more, assembled to receive their sailing orders from the naval control officer, the captain of the ocean escort, and the commodore of the convoy. 
Now, I'd like you to take careful note of the silhouette of my ship. Familiarize yourself with her appearance. It's important. Your stern light must be properly guarded, because if you get heavy seas and start rolling, it'll show. From dusk to dawn, remember, there must be no lights. They've left their uniforms aboard, as merchant captains will. But they're the salt of the earth and the sea. Theirs is the quiet bravery which demands that when death threatens, they are the last to leave. It is the final night ashore. Friendly interiors and friendly people dispense hospitality for Navy and merchantmen alike. Cinemas praise a life in the prairie. Store windows offer the prospect of wider trousers and tiddlier silk than the buses issue. Here the professor of tattoo. Here a game of billiards. Here the prolonged rattle, the strike, the spare, and the blow of the bowling alley. Boys are with their first girls. Boys are with their last. They sail at daybreak. The noise of last minute loading goes on through the night. Steam is up. The engineers stand by below. Another caravan of the sea is up anchor and away. Round the anchor it speeds the pilot boat. A pilot for every ship. Deep water lies ahead. The last gift of the harbor men is to take the ships safely down in procession to the sea. The airmen who will guard them over the horizon take off and sweep seaward. Out into the battle of the Atlantic. The destroyers lead the way. Convoy will assemble outside and move off according to their ordered stations. With the freighters will go the tankers. With the great ocean going ships will go the cockle shells. In these days of crisis, just as brave as the betters. The bombers stand out against the passing sky. Out into the battle of the Atlantic. of the sky looked down upon the painted ships on a painted ocean. Farewell, Manchester Progress, and all your brave pan. Ships of the line, may the bright fortunes of war go with you. God protect you from the dangers of the sea and the violence of the enemy, that you may return in safety to enjoy the blessings of the land and the reward of your labor. God speed you.